when we were setting up our compound interest calculations earlier, one of the important considerations was the compounding period, or number of calculations of interest within a certain time, usually a year. Interesting thing about compound interest. If you increase the frequency of compounding, up to a certain point, you see an incremental but still real increase in the overall result of the compounding process. If we compounded interest daily instead of monthly, for example, the amount in the account at the end of the five-year term would be $6,749.13 instead of $6,744.25. So the obvious next action to take once this has been realized is to perform compounding as often as possible, maybe even continuously. There is a two-part mitigating factor here, though. First, time can only be divided so much, and second, as you make those divisions smaller and smaller, there is naturally less time in each to actually accumulate interest. And the law of diminishing returns eventually does run into a real barrier here. Fortunately, someone has already defined that barrier and did so working with exactly these kinds of calculations. The idea of this continuous exponential value was first formulated by late 17th century math superhero Jacob Bernoulli, who came from a family of ridiculously prolific mathematicians, and was later formalized by even more legendary mathematician Leonard Euler. The E that we use to refer to this value is a nod to him. E is the exponential constant, an irrational number, not unlike pi or the golden ratio phi, which shows up all over the place in mathematical and natural processes from nuclear decay to animal population changes. As far as compounding interest goes, we can use E to set up what is called continuously compounding interest. Interest accumulates in a smooth curve instead of in steps at compounding periods. The continuously compounding interest formula is simple. Our principal P times E raised to the interest rate R and the length of the term T. So, yes, hurt. So, for our certificate of deposit, we plug everything in and do a th quick three-step calculation, and we find that the maximum possible amount in the account after five years is $6,749.29, rounded down to the nearest cent because, of course, this is a bank. And, yes, that's a whole 16 cents more than daily compounding, diminishing returns, remember. We can also run a continuously compounded interest calculation to find the absolute shortest time to double our original deposit, a process which introduces us to the inverse of e to a variable power, which is a logarithm with base e, the natural logarithm, or ln. Let's reset our terms in continuously compounded form. 10,000 equals 5,000 times e to the point 0, 0,6 times t. Again, simplify. Take the 5,000 out from either side, 2 equals e raised to the 0 0.06t. We can now set this up as a logarithm. 0 0.06t equals ln of 2. ln of 2 is about 0.693. Divide that by 0 0.06, and we find that t equals about 11.55, or 11 years and a bit more than 6.5 months. It will get to the doubling point about 10 days sooner than it would with monthly compounding. Given our understandings of exponential situations and logarithms, and especially E and LN, we can now start to model various physical phenomena and solve a number of meaningful questions, such as, how long does it take for pizza straight out of the oven to cool enough to eat without burning your mouth? Heating or cooling can be seen as a form of continuous growth or decay that follows a particular exponential pattern. Given an object at a certain temperature, placed in an environment with a different ambient temperature, the object's temperature will change quickly at first, but then more gradually as it approaches that ambient temperature. Past the need to model a certain amount of heating or cooling over a certain time period, the modeling formula for this process is not too complicated. It also simplifies the nature of temperature distribution through the object, but we'll leave that aside for now. As a bonus, we also get to name drop another famous math dweeb, in this case none other than Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's law of cooling states that given an object's original temperature T sub null and an ambient temperature of C, the temperature T at a given time is C plus the product of the difference of T sub null and C 
and e raised to the power k times t, where k is the constant of cooling and lowercase t is elapsed time. k is going to be a negative number because of the cooling process, and it is situation specific. We have to solve for it in each individual case. To do so, let's set up our pizza situation. Pizza ovens tend to run hot. Let's say the instant that we pull the pizza out of the oven, it is at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. We set it on the cutting board in a kitchen which is at an ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After two and a half minutes, it is down 150 degrees to 300. How much longer do we have to wait until it is at a palatable 140 degrees? First, we have to find K. Yes, I know the pizza is waiting. Please be patient. Set up the known values. 450 was the original temperature. Room temp is 70. Current pizza temperature is 300. So, 300 equals 70 plus 450 minus 70 times e to the 2.5k. Simplify. Subtract 70 from each side and clean up the subtraction inside the parentheses. 230 equals 380 times e to the 2.5k. Divide both sides by 380 to isolate the exponential expression. 230 over 380 equals e to the 2.5k. To find the exponent, in this case, we use a logarithm. The logarithm with base e is the natural logarithm, or ln. Log base e, or ln, of 230 over 380 is equal to 2.5k. Ln of 230 over 380 is actually really close to negative 1 half, or negative 0.5. Divide both sides by 2.5, and k, our constant of cooling, is essentially a very convenient negative 0.2. Take this and sub it into our final setup, where our target temperature is 140 degrees. 140 equals 70 plus 450 minus 70 times e to the negative 0.2t. Simplify again. 70 equals 380 times e to the negative 0.2t. 70 over 380 is e to the negative 0.2t. Take the ln of both sides again. Divide both sides by negative 0.2, and our official 140 degree wait time is just under eight and a half minutes after we pull it from the oven. I suppose it's your call on whether you want to wait that long, though.